there, it's Nicole and welcome to the Waffle Flower channel. This is It's in the Details and today I have a set of four thank you spinner cards to share with you. I love spinner cards because they are interactive. And as I was looking through my Waffle Flower stamps, I realized that there are a ton of mirror image stamps and coordinating dies which make creating spinner cards so easy. We're going to start by creating the frame for the spinner. And to do that, I'm going to take a Lacy Layers rectangle die and then the smaller of the two circles in the Flower Circles inverted die collection. And I'm going to use some post-it tape to tape these together. I'm doing this for two reasons. This makes it stay in place when I run it through my Big Shot. And if I'm careful, these are going to die cut exactly the same on all four panels because I'm creating a set of cards. So I'm going to run that back and forth through my die cutting machine a couple of times and then go ahead and pop that out. So I'm going to be kind of careful, like I said, I can get four frame panels from one eight and a half by 11 sheet. So that's kind of what the panel is going to look like. I'm just checking with my greeting that I'm going to be using and make sure that looks good. I'm going to go ahead and show this again. I'm going to just do the same thing. I haven't even moved my post-it tape. Go ahead and place that on the other half of my sheet of paper and run that through my die cutting machine back and forth a couple times to get another panel. I will do this two more times for four panels total. Any of those little inside pieces we're not actually going to use. Now for the card itself, I need an opening in the card front. So I have some top fold card bases and I went ahead and removed that center circle because I wanted to tape that down and run that through, but I need it to line up perfectly. So what I actually need to do is I need one additional frame that I use as a template and I'll show you how I use that as a template. I can use one of my frames to go ahead and perfectly line these back up, which I did. I'm just going to carefully pull my frame out now. I will go and grab another sheet of paper and die cut this frame again. Now I can remove the outer frame. This is going to be my template frame. And I'm going to take my scissors and cut a little notch in the top of the frame. This is going to allow me to easily remove this frame once I have my circle die in place. So I'm going to use this to line it up so it has about equal distance on all four sides, put my frame in place, and then put, uh, use the post-it tape to hold it down and then remove the frame. If it didn't have that cut notch in it, it would be really hard to do that. I'm going to take my card now, this is a top fold card base, and run it through my Big Shot a couple times and then go ahead and pop that out and you'll see that it has a nice little window opening to the inside. I'll use my bone folder to score that and hold it down. I'm going to grab a frame so you can see what that's going to look like. And there is the front of my spinner. The spinner will be right there in that little window. I'll go ahead and show this again. I'm going to take my template, line it up where I want that window to go, leaving about equal distance on all four sides, grab my die. I forgot to remove those little inside pieces, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. You can save those for another project or throw them away. Either way will work. Go ahead and put that die in place, hold it down with post-it tape, and carefully remove that template and go ahead and run that back and forth through your die cutting machine to get a little window in the front of your card base. Now, I went ahead and did this for all four, but I don't want to have to recreate this template. So I like to just go ahead, I'm gonna put spinner panel template, and I'm going to put this in the back of one of my die collections. In fact, I think I put it in the back of the flower circles inverted packet. I'm going to put my dies back in here. I'll put the template in the back. And next time I want to create a spinner card, there is my template. I, I'm all ready to go. I don't have to create another one. I've got some Bristol Smooth cardstock now, and I am going to take a bunch of mirror image critters 
and put them here in my on my paper and I'm going to stamp them with the Misty. I've got the foxes from the Trick or Treat stamp set. I'm going to take both the kitties and the bunnies from the Welcome Spring stamp set and then the snail from the Snail Mail stamp set. There are some others. I, In fact, I'm going to go ahead and use the ghosts from Trick or Treat as well. I'll stamp them. I ended up not using them, but you could create some really cute uh, Halloween ghost spinner cards or tags for Halloween. I used the Misty so I could ink these all at once, and I'm only actually going to press this twice. I'm going to ink them the first time and then I'll ink them up and stamp them again. That way any little areas that might be faint or light are going to be nice and dark. I love the Misty for stamping lots of images with only one or two presses of the tool. I'll pop this out and I can start coloring these with the Zig Clean Color Real Brush Markers. This Bristol cardstock is fantastic for coloring with your Zig Clean Color markers. They blend beautifully. Unfortunately, I'm so sorry, I'm a little out of the top of the frame here for coloring this fox. Both sides are going to be colored exactly the same, so I'll move it down here in a minute and you'll see me color the second one. All of the colors of the Zig Clean Color Real Brush markers I'm using are listed across the bottom of the screen, both the number and the name. So if you're ever wondering exactly which markers I'm using, that is where you can find that information. The coloring was probably one of the quickest parts of creating these cards. They actually were super quick and easy. If you're only creating one, it's going to be even faster. But because this was a very easy card and because it lends itself so well to assembly line style um, putting to, when you put it together, I went ahead and did four. I think the this uh, particular card or cards would be fantastic as a Christmas or holiday present to a friend or family member that loves cards. We all need thank you cards. So this is a great way to give a nice gift to somebody. I would create probably maybe 10 total, eight to 10, package them up real cute, tie them up with a ribbon, add envelopes, and go ahead and give them as a gift. I think that would be really fun. You could do duplicates or you could go ahead and find some more animals that have mirror images to do. One of the best things about these particular images I am not going to have to fussy cut them at all, which is great for me. I call myself the lazy die cut, or the lazy cutter because I really prefer not to fussy cut most of the time. Um, I love when there's coordinating dies and I can just die cut them. It's so much quicker. The bunny, I only wanted to have a little hint of color. Because these are water-based markers, I used the cool gray and then blended it out with the Wink of Stella clear glitter brush pen. That's a nice clear pen, uh, marker that's also water-based that will blend out those grays really nicely. I have used the coordinating dies now from Trick or Treat, Welcome Spring, and Snail Mail. Tape them in place with a little post-it tape and I'm going to run them back and forth through my die cutting machine a couple times to get all of the components. Once these are die cut, I will show you how they fit back to back perfectly. This is what makes them so great for creating spinners. So here's my little bunny, and I'll show you how they fit back to back. Isn't that fantastic? I was so excited when I realized so many of my waffle flower stamps had mirror images. So much fun. So here are all four that I'm going to be creating my cards with. I'm going to go ahead and finish up the rest of my panel now. I'm going to add greetings by stamping a greeting from the Balloon Messages stamp set with Versamark ink and heat embossing with white embossing powder. I'll also stamp the little heart from the Balloon Messages underneath. I'm doing this assembly line style, so doing all of my stamping at once, putting on the embossing powder, and then I'll heat set them once I have all four inked up, I am using a powder bag tool before I add my stamping. That way it kind of helps keep the embossing powder only on the 
stamped greeting and not migrating anywhere else. Heat all of these up, again, doing them all at the same time. I heat the front and the back to kind of help keep warping to a minimum. And then I'm going to do some embossed resist by applying picked raspberry and spun sugar distress inks over my panel. So at the bottom is some picked raspberry and then it's spun sugar up near the top, it gets lighter. I'm gonna buff off the greeting with a paper towel so you can really see that greeting. You can see how much more that stands out when you buff that excess ink off. I am spritzing my panels with water from a distress sprayer and letting the water naturally wick away and create some light areas. I'm also watering down some brushed pewter distress paint and flicking it all over the surface with a paintbrush. I'm gonna let all of my panels dry completely and then I am ready to put together the spinner element. I'm placing some nice strong adhesive above and below the window on the front opening of the frame panel. Now I left this in, this is not really my preferred way of putting together the spinner element. I like to usually put it together first and then take it to the frame and I left it in so you can see why that this doesn't, this doing it this way does not work for me. So I lined up one of the images with the frame, placed my adhesive, put my embroidery floss down the center and I'm gonna take my other image, put a little adhesive on it and sandwich that embroidery floss between the two. But when I flip it over, I realize he is not even close to being even, or at least not how I want him to look. I did snip off the excess here. So when I flip it over, he's like not the way I want him to look. It's fine and it would be okay, but that just didn't work. So I'm gonna just pull it apart and start over and show you how I like to do it and how I think it makes it a little bit easier. I like to sandwich my embroidery floss in between the two critters. That way I can line them up how I think they look straight on or however I want them to appear in the window. Again, I'm just putting a little more adhesive on the other side because you want it to be nice and strong. Sandwich that embroidery floss in between. Then I like to take it to my card panel place it through my adhesive and I'm going to double check this again. I went over that with the glue glider because you want all of your spinner components to be nice and strong and that looks much better. I'm going to need to snip off this excess and actually I'll just flip it over and snip it off which makes it much easier to do. So that's all hidden behind my front panel place some strong adhesive all over the back of my frame, take it to my card now and secure it. And you can see the cute little spinner element. I'm gonna wind him up now. And when you open the card or when the recipient does, the little critter is gonna spin. And that was really kind of fast. So I will show that again with my next card because I don't think that it's very easy to see here. So wind it up, the recipient opens it, and the critter will spin. I'm gonna set that aside and go ahead and show this one more time. I've got some nice strong adhesive above and below the opening on the back of my frame. I'm also gonna do the same thing to my card base, adhesive above and below the window opening. You want anywhere where that spinner element's going to be attached to be really nice and strong. I'm going to put some adhesive on both sides of my fox and then I'm going to sandwich my embroidery floss in between the two images. Once I have that done, I'm gonna take my critter to my window and make sure it's nice and taut. Go ahead and run my adhesive over that to secure it. Place adhesive all over the back actually. I'm gonna snip the ends of my embroidery floss so it's hidden behind the panel. Take this to my card base line it up and go ahead and put that right down. Then I'll spin up my little fox so you can see him move. Again, that was a little fast. So let me show that a little, I'll open the card a little slower this time. And look how cute he is. I just love 
how fun and interactive these are. Now I want, thought it needed a little contrast behind the opening, so I went ahead and placed or die cut additional panels with a Lacy Layers die, adhered it on the inside of the card. I'm just addicted to spinning these. I think it's so much fun. Here's the little snail. I'm gonna add some black glaze pin to the eyes and nose on the fox. And I'm also going to adhere some iridescent pretty pink posh heart confetti all over the front of all four card panels. Adds just an additional little bit of shimmer, um, some nice fun embellishment to the cards. I'm using the quick stick tool to pick them up easily. Some little white dots for the eyes and my cards are all finished. Thank you for joining me today for the, the set of Thank You Spinner Cards showcasing Waffle Flower stamps and dies. For more product information, please visit waffleflower.com. Follow us on YouTube, Instagram, and Facebook for more creative ideas. Thanks for watching, and we'll catch you next time.